So the Georgia is an excellent ship. Uh, I think this ship is a lot of fun. I really enjoy the entire American secondary battleship line. Unfortunately, they're all premiums, which kind of sucks, but they're incredibly fun. Um, Georgia is especially fun because you get a speed boost, and you can essentially go 39 knots um, with speed boost active with a speed flag. So it's... It's hilarious to run around the map with this thing, and um, I play it in a way that's pretty aggressive, I think, and sometimes that gets me killed. Like here, as you can see, it's early game, and I've pushed up into this gap to try and brawl some people. Now, I do have islands, so that does help. So I, I tend to play this ship around islands and use the speed boost to pop in and out behind these islands to get safe or to get some opportune shots out. Here, though, I think you're going to see how squishy this ship is. I just ate, um, what was that, like 25k? Or, sorry, 15k damage. That's nearly 20k, actually, from an angled to a turpitz and a shores HE salvo. So, it's, that's kind of my one issue with this ship, is that it has weak armor. And this ship actually gets the biggest superstructure out of all of the uh, high-tier American battleships. It's the biggest. Simply because it's so long. Um, and that eats a lot of damage. So there's just so much time for the AP shells to arm in your superstructure that you're often going to find that if you're trying to bow tank enemy battleships who know to shoot your superstructure, you're just going to eat a lot of damage through that, and that's something you have to keep in mind when playing this ship. That when angled, it's not as tanky as a Massachusetts or an Ohio, for example. Um, but that's not to say it's bad, you just have to play it a little bit differently. And generally, that's why I play this ship around islands even more, and pick the times that I decide to pop out, right? like. It's more of a skirmish fighter, not a prolonged brawler, I would say. Um, the nice thing about this ship, though, is it's one of the most accurate battleships in the game. Um, if you take Dispersion Module, the, it's kind of disgusting, simply because you're on the Battle Cruiser Dispersion Table, I believe, not even the Battleship one. So despite having 1.8 Sigma, um, your Dispersion is just so good that it doesn't matter that you have kind of poor sigma um so because at stock you have 217 meters of dispersion if you take the accuracy module it's less than 200 meters of dispersion at 20 kilometers which is crazy and sure you have six shells but the nice thing is you get overmatch and at tier 9 the ability to overmatch 30 millimeters of armor is just ridiculous <laughs> it's it's amazing and um the fire rate you know at a 26 second reload base is quite nice. So you can either decide to be more accurate or more have some more DPM. I usually choose, I actually don't usually choose either one. I, I kind of switch back and forth depending on what I'm feeling for the day. As you can see, we hit all four there. I was a little high on my aim, but quite good groupings, honestly, for a battleship. You're never going to expect a battleship to be as accurate as a destroyer or cruiser, but this one is quite nice. The secondaries are essentially the exact same as the Massachusetts. They don't have any special reload buff or um, fire chance buff like the Ohio has, but honestly, that's fine because Massachusetts secondaries are great. <laughs> it's it's really good. Um, you still get your improved heal cooldown, so you can fly through all your heals, and that really keeps you in the fight a lot. Um, but the ship is squishier than Massachusetts or Ohio. And that's not something that um, I can back up with data, really, compared to a um, when I'm comparing these ships. It's just something that I've played these ships a lot at a pretty high level, and um, I feel like this one is the squishiest out of all of them. That doesn't stop me from just full charging, though. You can see this is the very beginning of this game, and I'm speed boosting into this gap on... Uh, and I think this ship can do some pretty interesting things like this just because of how fast it is. This um, this play you couldn't really do in another battleship I don't think because they're just too slow. And I get fortunate that there wasn't really a DD to torp me as I crossed but 
Once you're into this middle gap, honestly, it's super difficult for the enemy team to get uh, B or C without dealing with you first. So, a very powerful position that I like to get into, but um, yeah, this ship does take a lot of damage from <laughs> enemy battleships, um, especially Musashi. You do get the upgraded upper belt armor that has 38 millimeters, so that's nice. But your Citadel armor is still quite weak. Um, if you've ever looked at the Iowa, Missouri, and Georgia too, um, Citadel armor, it's actually not very thick. <laughs> so you really, really need to make sure you stay angled to enemy battleships. Otherwise, I mean, everybody has a pretty easy time citadeling you. That Alaska could citadel me out to uh, out to 15 kilometers, I think. Pretty incredible. So you need to make sure you angle in this thing. And if you do angle, you're still going to eat damage to your superstructure. I know I'm harping on the squishiness of this ship, but I just want to give you a realistic... Um, have realistic expectations of this ship. Because it's not the amazing crazy brawler that can withstand punishment forever you know but yeah you see it's accurate very 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 accurate <laughs> sometimes uh it, it's nice it's really nice to get shots like that but you're not gonna get that all the time as you saw in the musashi earlier you know it's uh it's a kind of hit and miss kind of ship but that's okay, because you get cool secondaries, fast heals, all that good stuff. So, here I make a mistake in pushing out too far from this island. There's really no reason for me to do it. They're retreating. I'm just... I'm just YOLOing here. I, I don't know why I decided to do this, but this is a really bad play, because I'm opening myself up to not only the Iowa, but the other Iowa, the Alaska, and soon to be a Musashi. So, and there's a Fletcher here too, so... I. I think the pl better play here would have definitely been to um, turn around and go back to B and just wait for them to push into B because my whole team here is here at C. So um, kind of a misplay here for me that I just keep pushing and you'll see my health just kind of evaporate. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing I can recommend on how to play this ship is don't go and try and fight you know, five enemy ships and be the entire focus of the enemy team, right? Like, just don't, that's, I mean, that seems obvious, but sometimes the way these secondary battleships can get, you start to feel like you're, you know, you're better at close range because you have secondaries, right? So you have to get into those ranges all the time. Um, sometimes you feel like that, and I, I need to not do that as much. <laughs> so I'm warning you now, don't try and do this stuff. As you can see, dude, Musashi didn't really have any issues slapping me. Um, even at these extreme angles, it's, uh, it's still, well, that one wasn't as much, but the, uh, original one was, uh, was a pretty good hit, even though we were relatively well angled, but that doesn't really matter, so. Yep, and I'm asking my team to push up here, but realistically, I just pushed up too far by myself. That was, uh, that was a bad play by me, so. That's the kind of how I would play it. That's the highlights portion. Let's jump into a uh, live game. All right, guys. So welcome to the live game. Um, Georgia often gets this um, with Tier 9 Matchmaker. I think you all know this at this point. But if you don't know, Tier 9 is kind of the blessed matchmaking tier at this point. Because um, it just happens to be top tier a lot. A lot, a lot. So, that's really nice. So, because, I mean, this ship in top tier is disgusting. It really is. It's just so good. Because um, you overmatch, you know, like the Colorado Lion, Lion, or Leon. Um, I overmatch everything but the Sovetsky Soyuz in the Georgia, right? Like, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. So, you see me pop speed boost right away. Um... Mainly that's this map and the way it works. Um, I want to get out to this corner as fast as possible. Um, because if we can control this corner, we'll generally get control of A. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I pop speed boost right away. And you can see how fast we are. It, it's hilarious how fast this ship is. Um, a lot of DDs can't even run away from you <laughs> if we have speed boost up. Um, 
but yeah, I was a little bit negative, I think, um, in the highlights that I showed you. The ship is very good. Uh, I don't want you to think this ship is bad. Uh, the problem is really just that this superstructure is just gigantic, right? All of this is superstructure. All of this. It's just, it's gigantic. And I don't want people to just think that this ship can tank like a Massachusetts or an Ohio can, because it can't. Um, it's, it's really difficult to um, live as long in this ship. But you get a speed boost and really good concealment um, as, as we get spotted. This is probably a DD right here. Yes, okay. So because of that, we're going to take a slightly more conservative line to the wide, to the one line, or two line, sorry. Because we don't really want to overcommit here at the start of the game. There's no point. But yeah, the ship is really, like, really, really good. It's got insane firepower, insane accuracy, crazy secondaries, good AA, really fast reload heal, but, you know... You gotta give it a weakness somewhere. And for this ship, that comes in the superstructure. In this game, I'm running reload, so if you see the dispersion being a little wonky and you think, oh, maybe I, I'd like better dispersion, um, definitely run definitely run the uh, accuracy module. I just enjoy running reload because, you know, having a fast reload is really fun. Try and knock the Brindisi out. Let's see. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yep, yeah, this ship is good. <laughs> it's it's a fun ship to play. What can I say? You just gotta play it smart. You can't play the ship without thinking about its weaknesses because it certainly has them. It's not the, well, in tier 9 matchmaker, it does feel like the all-powerful beast that it kind of is, but um, it, it's fun. It's fun. You get to flanks faster than anyone else. You have really accurate overmatching guns that deal 15,750 damage per citadel, right? And with this setup, you have a 22.9 second reload, which is crazy. Since there's no CV, we're going to pop this for vision. We're just basically hoping there's no DD right here. Because um, I want to secondary these guys. I really, really want to get my secondaries on these guys. Because, yeah. Well, you know what these secondaries do. <laughs> uh, how far should I go out here? We're still not lit. There's no DD right next to us. Oh, we ought, we do have a DD out here. Okay, so there's a DD in here somewhere. Unless it was the... They don't spot me. Oh, they're not moved up. That sucks. They're all shooting HE. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to fight this right now, so... The Leones are probably just going to spam HE at me. Oh, he's got AP in the tubes. Oh, that's cool. It's nice to see. Yeah, get a Kazi. But yeah, you see how much damage we just eat there? Right? It's... It's... It takes some pain. Good thing we backed up. Look at that. I'm on half HP already from tier 7 battleships. See? Now, we have 5 heals that come up really quickly, so we'll get back in the fight, no problem. But... I think that illustrates my point. <laughs> and that's why I, I get really frustrated with this ship. Because I want it to be as tanky as a Massachusetts or as an Ohio. And it just isn't. It really just isn't. So we're just going to chill here and just get shots on whoever we can right now. Um, there's not much point in going out there and getting spotted and farmed by HE spamming Leons. So we won't. We'll use our crazy DPM. You know, we got 60k damage. That's good. 73. <laughs> right? It's good. 
It's good. Uh, hopefully our Fiji doesn't get blapped here. That wouldn't be very good. I see that Georgia, and I'm debating whether I should just back behind this island and start shooting him. But it looks like he's just going to stay where he's at. I'm, and by that I mean he's going to stay on this side of the island, not come through the gap. So I likely won't get a shot really easily on him. Stalin might be good though. We do overmatch him, so... We can aim at him even though he's angled. Hmm. Yeah, it sucks that these um, Leons are playing like this. It's really sad. I mean, they're tier 7s. So they're bottom tier, so I don't fault them too much. But, I mean, spamming high explosive from the back of the map is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not a huge fan of that, I'll be totally honest. I wish it wasn't so easy and good, you know. Should probably heal. Sometimes I don't want to heal just because of the AR buff that you get from not healing, but may as well get up to, you know, over 50k. But as you can see, we're winning the middle pretty hard. They've uh, really overcommitted. I will take that shot. And in fact, I think we might just go to this island here. And we landed short, unfortunately. This is, yeah, so, like, you can't, like, that's the thing about this ship. It's, it's so fast that you often get yourself into trouble very quickly. See, if I had gone around this corner at 40 knots, I would have died. Right? There's no way I can take on a... HE spamming Colorado, Leon, Leon, and Kitakazi all by myself. That's just not gonna happen, so. And that's fine. I mean, you should be able to take on like 1v4s by yourself, you know? I'm keeping an eye out for the Soyuz. I might have a broadside shot on him eventually. Yeah, they're just kind of playing really passively, so. Sucks, but sometimes you can't get in there and brawl every game. That's okay. Just less fun for me, you know? As someone who loves to get in there and brawl. Uh, how should I do this? I think we'll just stay here, actually. Yeah, see? That's... I don't know. It... it I don't know if that's down to mindset or what, but it feels like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to what it's what the cause is of all the passivity, I guess it would be. But it's too bad, man. It really is. I miss the days when everybody was a beginner and nobody knew how to play the game and then it was like everybody would just push in like, 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 dumb plays, but at least it was, it made it really fun, you know? It made it really fun to play. Am I underleading this guy? I am underleading this guy. Wow. Still 15k, but, yeah. I'm going to say requesting support, so hopefully Fiji or something comes and helps me, because if I have to deal with two DDs all by myself, that is not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really not amazing. Kitakazi Benham might clap me out, so... Oh, see, when you get a Citadel, man. Right, like, the AP damage is disgusting. All right, this is a great game, you know. 132k, I think I'm averaging somewhere in this range. Maybe a little bit more. I just enjoy the close-up brawling parts of the game, you know. That's my favorite part. This guy's literally coming out here to spam me with HE. So I'm not even going to shoot. <laughs> this, like... Oh, okay. I'm just not going to shoot. Screw it, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to give him what he wants. Nope. No point. Oh, 
I'll shoot to maybe kill him. And then we'll present a good reversing Georgia. And then we'll come forward. Oh, I didn't kill him. Once he shoot, as soon as he shoots, we're gonna go forward, and you're gonna see the crazy acceleration on this ship. Oh, he aimed for me to go forward. That's pretty smart. Good thing his dispersion's not very good, usually. That was a good shot by him. I just, man. Use your skill to use AP in position, not to spam high explosive at people, <laughs> you know? Oh, he's using AP, nice. Good stuff, dude. Still did pretty solid damage, all things considered. I don't feel like fighting a Kitakaze all by myself, so I will not. So I will not. It's all about choosing fights in this ship, really. If the Kitakazi wasn't there, I'd rush the Leon, honestly. But despite this game being over, it's it's still a Kitakazi. <laughs> it's he'll just smoke up and spam me with high explosive or AP if I'm forced to angle, and then it's just sad days for me. But it's been a good game overall, I think. I think it's shown the strengths and weaknesses of this ship. The ship is a monster, but it's a monster with some weaknesses, which is good. I don't think every ship should be just like easy mode, broken, overpowered. Bad shot by me there. Now that this guy's in secondary range, we'll poke out, see what happens. Can we Citadel this guy? See, this is my uh, biggest complaint, I think, is that Citadels are really difficult to get on a lot of ships. Damn, somebody got a Kraken. Good for them. Like, I, I, I wish there were more ships that would easier to hit Citadels, you know? Right? Like, so I'm complaining about how squishy this ship is, but... I wish more ships were like look why am I not dealing more damage to a Leon, right? Like it's 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 weird to me how many ships get away with just sitting broadside. I I don't know. It it's very weird to me. I wish there was less damage taken when people were angled and I wish there was more damage taken when people were broadside. It, it it's it's a strange it's a strange game right now. Um but good on this lightning, damn. Well done, dude. You don't see good DD players every day. So, pretty decent game. Um, really didn't do much with our secondaries, honestly. But I've shown some clips with uh, with the secondaries going ham. So, main guns are very good on this ship, as you can see. Um, but yeah. So, let's talk about the build. Um, I've stopped going all in on secondaries. It's, it's basically the same build that I've been running on a lot of my ships. Um... Right, I'm taking auxiliary armaments to keep the secondaries alive. On the captain, we take preventive maintenance to keep the main guns alive. This one's pretty self-explanatory, I think. <laughs> Your engine and rudder never go down on a battleship. Secondaries, again, pretty self-explanatory. Propulsion system. I use this because I can juke shells pretty easily. Um, when I'm camp like kind of camping an island, essentially. But it's an, a very forward position island, so I wouldn't really call it camping. But it allows you to get in and out from behind islands a lot quicker, which is why I like to use that. You can always use damage control system, because the speed boost really does give you um, the ability to move in and out of islands very quickly as well. So Concealment, because concealment's just amazing. And I run reload, but um, depending on the day, what I'm feeling like, honestly, accuracy might be even better. But you already have very accurate shells, you know, with um, with 216 meters of dispersion. If you put on the accuracy module, which I'll do here just real quick, you know, it goes to 193 meters, right? It's it's kind of hilarious how accurate this ship gets. Um, so even with a 1.8 Sigma, it's not a huge deal. Again, I'm running fighter plane to 
deter multiple drops from aircraft carriers. Um, they're always going to get a drop through, but fighters can somewhat deter the second drop um, along with the AA. So that's why I run it. So pretty standard flags, I think, to run. You know, you definitely want a speed flag on this and tankiness, secondaries, AA, that kind of stuff. Very nice to have. And now for the captain. This is, again, my Massachusetts captain. So expert loader is not as good on Georgia as it is on Ohio or Massachusetts. Georgia tends to be able to overmatch majority of its opponents that it faces, so you don't really need the ability to hot swap to HE um, as much as you do at tier 10 or tier 8, but still nice to have. I would still get... Eh, on Georgia, I'd probably get preventive maintenance first. Massachusetts, Ohio, I'd get expert loader first. Then Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, because you get through your heals so quickly, you want to have Superintendent over something like basic firing training. If you're in a German battleship and it's slower to get through your heals, I can make an argument for uh, BFT because it's unlikely if you're going in for bra brawls that you're going to get to your fifth heal. You'll probably die before then, or the game's over before then. So, um, But this ship, you get through your heals, so definitely take the extra one. That's very good. And an extra speed boost is also great. AFT manual secondary is pretty self-explanatory on a, on a secondary ship. Um, I see a lot of people say they shouldn't take manual on the American battleships, but that's just wrong. Um, the secondaries are nowhere near accurate enough without this. It's 60% dispersion, guys. Like, it's It makes a huge difference. Um, I think that mentality might come from, oh, I just hit the um, belt armor at close range, so if I have worse dispersion, then some of the shells will go up into the uh, superstructure. That's uh, Wargaming's way of balancing out secondaries, by the way, in case you didn't know. But And some of the communities latched onto it, which is really frustrating. Um, but at the ranges, you're going to be mainly firing these secondaries, which is, you know, 7 to 11 kilometers. You're going to be, they're going to be plunging fire because the American secondaries have such a high arc that um, it, they're going to be hitting the deck of the ship. And if that's the case, they're probably hitting the superstructure. So, um, yeah, and then concealment. Um, I've talked about this a little bit, but concealment is better for disengaging, getting into interesting island positions in a stealthy way. Um, if you're more interested in that kind of play style, concealment. You notice in that the live, the live game I played, I wasn't shooting all the time. I was using my concealment to get into different positions. If you're used to playing more like that, which is more of a Des Moines play style, honestly, um, concealment's really good. If you're more someone who's going to be in the open, like just going ham, uh, fire prevention is definitely better. Um, that's kind of the differences there. They're both very good. Um, if I could, I would take both, obviously. But uh, just depends on your play style. So, yeah. That's kind of all I really want to say on Georgia. The ship's very good. It's leaving the game, like my video um, talked about. You won't be able to buy this in three months. So, if you've got the coal, I think this is a great pickup. And if you don't have the coal, it's kind of expensive, but it's still a very good ship. Um, but I think the Massachusetts is a better ship. And I think the Ohio's a better ship. So if you had to miss one of the American premium secondary battleship line, I think this would be the weakest one. I would rate if I had to rank all three, I would put Massachusetts at first, then Ohio, then Georgia. Because Georgia's got the gigantic superstructure that I was talking about, see? It's just huge. And at an angle like this, AP shells to have forever to get a full pen, right? So I think uh, this ship is very fun with the speed boost, obviously, and tier 9 preferential matchmaker. We'll see how long that lasts, but right now it has the best matchmaker. I just think that uh, the other two ships are better in general. So that's my thoughts on Georgia. Um, I hope you, had a, hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful to you guys, and have a good day.